Hey everyone, my name is Kendra. I'm a biokinetist and today I'm going to be giving you some stretches that you can do after a run or if you're just generally working on your flexibility. So we're going to start standing. So you've just come back in from your run. We're going to start standing. We're going to lift the heel up, grab the ankle, pull it up behind you. If you need to grab a hold of something for balance and support, that's totally fine. But if you're looking for an extra challenge today, try balance on one leg without holding on to anything. Grabbing with two hands, we're going to tuck the tailbone, drawing the front of the hips up and pushing the knee back. So you kind of want to push the hips forward to stretch over this hip flexor area. So we are looking for a stretch in the quads at the bottom, but we're looking also over the, the joint around the hip area itself. So you're going to pull that heel up. If you can get the heel to your bum, fantastic. Making sure the low back's not arching forwards, squeeze those hips forwards. You can roll the shoulders back for a bonus stretch in the shoulders as well. You're going to hold that for about 30 seconds on each side. Once you've done both sides of your quad stretch, you're going to take that first leg, cross the ankle over the opposite knee and push the knee open. Then you want to sit down, keeping the knee back behind the toes. So if you look down, you can still see your toes. And try as much as possible to stick that bum out so you really get a big stretch over this joint and you'll feel a stretch into the bum muscles themselves. Again, hold on to something for balance if you need to. You might feel a little bit of a burn in the thighs as well, but you really want to get a big stretch in that bum. And the more you push that knee open, sticking the bum out, the more it's going to stretch. Once you've stretched the glutes on both sides, we're going to do a standing forward fold with split legs. So you take one foot forward, one foot back, it doesn't have to be too far apart, and try and keep those feet on train tracks. So you don't want one directly in front of the other, you want a nice little bit of space, roughly hip distance apart. Then you're going to keep the hips nice and square, straighten out the back, sticking your bum up to the sky, keeping a nice straight spine, hinge forwards until you feel a stretch down the back of that thigh. Try not to push too much into the toes of the front foot and try and keep those hips parallel to the ground and in line with one another. The more you lift the tailbone up to the sky, the more it's going to stretch right down the back of those hammies, maybe even into the palm, depending on what's tightest. If this is too easy, you can stretch all the way down and fold forward, but you'll find that straight to the back more lift in the tailbone will stretch more focused on that in the hands. I'll keep some standing forward fold split leg stretch on both sides. And you take a slightly bigger step back into a lunge. So again, feet are sort of hip just hip distance apart, one foot not directly in front of the other, but more in line with the hips themselves. Back leg is extended on the ball of the back foot unless you're struggling to balance and you can put that foot down. But we want to try and be on the ball of the back foot to keep those legs nice and parallel to one another and hips nice and square facing in the same direction rather than being twisted out to the side. So parallel those hips, square off the hips and we're going to lunge down into the front leg, tucking the tailbone so that we're not arching in the lower back. So imagine you're drawing the hips up the front of the body, pushing straight into that back leg and then sink it nice and low to the ground. Pull the right hip back, left hip pulls forward, and again, making sure that tailbone's nicely tucked, looking for a big stretch over the hip flexor. If you're especially tight in the glutes as well, the bum on the supporting leg will stretch too. You want to reach it up with both arms as well, so this is like your warrior one lunge. That should increase the stretch, but again, don't collapse the tummy forwards, don't collapse into the spine. Keep it strong. Stretches. We're going to have a line on the ground. Uh, you're going to lie on your back, straighten out the one leg, bring the other knee in towards your chest. So the more you stretch the other leg down to the ground, you'll get a bonus stretch over the hip flexor, but that's not really what we're worrying about right now. The more you pull this in, we'll stretch over that glute just for a bonus stretch. And then you're going to stretch the arm out and line of the shoulder, and place the hand behind your knee. Take the opposite hand to the outside of the knee and then cross that knee over the body, down to the ground on the other side. Try and keep your shoulder and elbow connected to the floor as you rotate through the spine, across the hip, and gently. Try not to force anything, 
and whatever's tightest will stretch first. So you might get it more over the hip, you might get it right down the outside parts of the thigh, or you may feel it in the lower back first. Just once oh. you finish your cross body stretch on both sides, you're gonna have a seat, bring one foot to the top of the thigh, other foot goes right next to your bum, and then lean back. Tucking the tailbone so that your lower back presses down to the ground first, and the tummy is nicely engaged. So you don't want to arch the spine backwards, you want to tuck and squeeze lower spine down to the ground first. Gently bending the elbows. If this is too easy and not quite getting a stretch, you can drop onto both elbows. You should feel a stretch, especially if you're really working that lower back down to the ground. The more you arch the back, the less it's going to stretch. So what we're looking for is a posterior pelvic tilt to increase the stretch over that hip joint and again you'll feel it lower down into the quads as well um, the more we can tighten into the tummy the more we'll feel it right up into the top of that hip joint too from the z stretch on both sides we're going to swing around onto your tummies and place the knees directly underneath the hips shins parallel to one another keeping the bum directly up in the air but stretch the arms forward, dropping the chest down to the floor. Try not to arch too much in the lower portion of the back. We're going to try to get the stretch into the upper portion of the back and right down the arms. So all the way up here, down into the rib cage. Try and get the chest to touch the floor, but don't force anything. If you're experiencing any kind of shoulder pain or serious pinching and discomfort, to take it, take it easy, take a step back. So taking one arm, threading it underneath the other armpit, coming to lie on your shoulder, on your ear, and then as you extend the arm, wrap it around the back, roll the shoulder open, twisting the chest towards the ceiling. You can use this arm as leverage to push you more open. Alternatively, this hand can place right in front of your face to press into the ground to get more of a twist. And there you have it. About five, ten minutes worth of stretching, easy enough to incorporate after your five, ten, twenty-one k run, um, or even further, or at the end of any exercise session, because we kind of get to a lot of important areas of the body. So it's a great place to start if you want to start incorporating a couple more stretches into your daily routine for exercise or just generally for life. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know how the stretch is going for you. As always, if any of the stretches cause you severe pain, rather take it a step back, don't push too far into the stretches, and maybe consult a doctor or bioanalysis or someone to help you figure out what's causing the issue at hand so you can get on top of that and don't have to suffer through the pain. Till next time.